Hey, I'm Sarah. I'm 18 and about to graduate high school. Life's been complicated. I lost my mom when I was 12, and yeah, that sucked. Dad did his best, but two years ago, he decided we needed some female guidance in the house. That's when Veronica came along, my stepmother. Spoiler, she's no fairy godmother. Sarah, honey, don't you think that shirt's a bit much for school? Veronica's voice is all sugar, but I can tell it's fake as I grab my backpack. I roll my eyes. It's fine, Veronica. Dad bought it for me last month, remember? Oh, of course, dear. I just worry about the impression you're making. Yeah, right. She's always pulling these little mind games, trying to make me second-guess myself. But I'm not falling for it. I dash out the door, texting my best friend, Emma, as I head to school. At it again. Save me, I type. Emma replies instantly. Ah, oh, she's the worst. Want me to accidentally spill something on her at the next family dinner. I laugh, feeling better already. Emma's been my rock through all this stepmom drama. At lunch, we're sitting together when my boyfriend, Mike, plops down next to us. Hey, beautiful, he says, giving me a quick kiss. You ready for the big chem test? I groan. Don't remind me, but yeah, I think I've got it. You know me, always prepared. Emma chimes in, yeah, little miss valedictorian over here. Save some brains for the rest of us, will you? We all laugh, and for a moment, I forget about the tension waiting for me at home. But it comes crashing back when I walk in the door to see Veronica, her perfectly manicured nails tapping away on her phone. Oh, Sarah, there you are. I was just looking at some lovely dresses for your graduation. This pink one would be asterisk darling asterisk on you. I peek at her screen. The dress is hideous, all ruffles and bows, like something for a five-year-old. Thanks, but I've already picked out my dress with Dad. I say, keeping my voice neutral. Her eyes narrow for a split second, then she plasters on that fake smile again. Well, I'm sure whatever you chose is, nice. I hurry upstairs, texting Emma. Asterisk Lee tried to get me in a Barbie nightmare dress for graduation. E-E-L-P, asterisk. Emma replies, asterisk no way. She's totally trying to sabotage your big day. Don't let her asterisk. I flop onto my bed, staring at the ceiling. Graduation should be exciting. But with Veronica around, I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop. My phone buzzes. It's Mike. Hey, you okay? You seem stressed at lunch. I smile, typing back. Yeah, just stepmom stuff. Nothing new. Thanks for checking in. At least I've got good people on my side. With Emma and Mike backing me up, I can handle whatever Veronica throws my way. Bring it on, set monster. Graduation photos should be a fun milestone, but I knew there'd be drama. Veronica cornered me one morning, her fake enthusiasm on full display. Sarah, darling, I've got the perfect makeup artist for your photos. My friend Tanya is absolutely fabulous. Thanks, but I was thinking of doing my own makeup. Her eyes narrowed. Now, now, don't be silly. This is a special occasion. Your father agrees it's best to have a professional. Great, she'd already roped Dad into this. I sighed, nodding reluctantly. The day of the shoot arrived and Tanya showed up, looking strangely nervous. I caught her and Veronica whispering and giggling. Red flags everywhere, but what could I do? All right, Sarah, let's make you gorgeous, Tanya said, spinning my chair away from the mirror. Trust me, you're in good hands. But as she worked, my skin crawled. The foundation felt thick, the eyeshadow heavy. I couldn't see a thing, and Veronica kept gushing about how stunning I looked. Finally, Tanya stepped back. All done, ready to see. She spun me around, and I nearly fell out of the chair. Staring back at me was, a clown. Bright red cheeks, blue eyeshadow up to my eyebrows, and lips outlined way past their natural shape in deep purple. What? What is this? I stammered. Veronica gasped dramatically. Oh my, Tanya, darling. I think you may have gone a bit overboard. Tanya looked down at the floor. I am so sorry, I must have misunderstood the brief. The photographer, bless him, stepped in. Maybe we should reschedule, give you time to adjust the look. I nodded, fighting back tears as I rushed to the bathroom to scrub it all off. As I passed by, I overheard Veronica and Tanya in the hallway. Did you see her face? Veronica whispered, giggling. Priceless. That'll teach her to be so full of herself. Tanya laughed nervously. 
You're sure she won't figure it out. Please, she's clueless. Now, not a word. I froze fury and hurt washing over me. Grabbing my phone, I texted Emma. 911. V sabotaged my photos. Need you. Ten minutes later, Emma burst into the bathroom. Holy crap, what did they do to you? I broke down, telling her everything as she helped me remove the makeup. I can't believe she'd stooped this low. I sobbed. Emma hugged me tight. We'll fix this, I promise, and we'll make her pay. My phone buzzed. Mike, how the photos go? I hesitated, then sent him a selfie of my tear-streaked, half-clown face. This bad. Call you later. His response was instant. I'm coming over. Nobody messes with my girl. As Emma and I left the bathroom, we ran straight into Veronica. Oh, Sarah, there you are. I was so worried. Are you okay, sweetie? I looked her dead in the eye. I'm fine, Veronica, just fine. Her fake smile faltered for a second. She knew I knew. Game on, step monster. Later that night, curled up in my room with Emma and Mike, I felt a surge of determination rise within me. Guys, I'm done playing nice, I said, my voice steady. It's time to show Veronica who she's really messing with. Emma grinned wickedly. Count me in. Operation Stepmom Takedown starts now. Mike squeezed my hand, his eyes full of support. We've got your back, babe, always. I nodded, my mind racing as a plan began to take shape. Veronica thought she could humiliate me, but she had no idea what was coming. This soon-to-be graduate was about to teach her a lesson she'd never forget. After the photo fiasco, I knew I had to dig deeper into Veronica's past. Something just didn't sit right with me, and I was determined to get to the bottom of it. Emma, I need your help, I said, pacing my room. We need to find dirt on Veronica. Emma cracked her knuckles with a smirk. I'm on it. Operation Stepmom Takedown is officially a go. We spent the next several days combing through social media, old newspapers, and any public records we could find. Emma even sweet-talked the school secretary into accidentally letting her see Veronica's background check. Sarah, check this out, Emma said one afternoon, pointing at her laptop screen. Your dad set up a college fund for you when you were born. It's huge now. I frowned. Yeah. So. So guess who became co-trustee when she married your dad? Veronica, I whispered, my blood running cold. Emma nodded grimly. It's looking that way. Later that day, Mike came by looking excited. Babe, I think I've got something that could help. My cousin Jake is a private investigator. He owes me a favor. I hugged him tight. Mike, you're a genius. Jake agreed to look into Veronica's past, and a week later, he came back with a bombshell. Your stepmom's been busy, Jake said, sliding a file across the table. Three previous marriages, all to wealthy, older men. Each ended in divorce within two years, and she walked away with a nice chunk of change every time. I felt sick. She's a gold digger. Jake nodded. And a good one. She's also got a history of fraud. She's changed her name a couple of times to avoid detection. Armed with this info, I decided it was time to confront Tanya. I cornered her at the local coffee shop. Tanya. I know Veronica put you up to the makeup stunt, I need to know why. Tanya broke down, tears streaming down her face. I'm so sorry, Sarah. Veronica has dirt on me. She threatened to expose some mistakes from my past if I didn't help her. I softened. Tanya, Veronica is the bad guy here, not you. Help me take her down, and I promise I'll help you too. She nodded, wiping her eyes. Okay, what do you need? Back home, I was digging through Dad's old emails. Don't judge, desperate times, when I struck gold. There were messages from Veronica to a friend, bragging about how she'd landed a rich sucker, and how she'd be set, once I get my hands on the Bratz College Fund. I sat back, stunned. I had her. But how could I tell Dad without breaking his heart? Emma and Mike came over for an emergency strategy session. We need to expose her publicly, Emma said, pacing the room. Make it impossible for her to wiggle out of it. Mike nodded. But we've got to be careful. Your dad needs to see the truth for himself. I took a deep breath. I've got an idea. It's risky, but if it works. As we hammered out the details, I felt a surge of confidence. Veronica had underestimated me. She thought I was just some dumb kid she could manipulate, but she was about to find out just how wrong she was. 
The big day arrived, Operation Exposed Veronica was in full swing. I convinced Dad to host a family dinner to celebrate my upcoming graduation. Little did he know what was really on the menu. Once we were all seated, I stood up, my heart pounding. Before we eat, I have something important to share. Veronica's eyes narrowed slightly. Sarah, dear, can it wait? We're all hungry. No, it can't, I said firmly. Dad, Veronica isn't who you think she is. Dad looked confused. Sarah, what are you talking about? I took a deep breath. Veronica married you for your money, specifically for my college fund. Veronica laughed nervously. Don't be ridiculous, Sarah. Where do you get these ideas? I nodded to Jake, the PI. He stood up, handing out folders. These contain Veronica's history, three previous marriages, all to wealthy men, all ending in divorce within two years. Veronica's face went pale. This is absurd. Robert, you can't believe this nonsense. Dad was flipping through the folder, his expression darkening. Veronica, is this true? There's more, I continued. Emma, show him the emails. Emma pulled out her tablet, displaying the messages Veronica had sent to her friend about her rich sucker husband and her plans for my college fund. Veronica stood up, knocking over her wine glass. These are fake. Sarah's trying to turn you against me. It's all true, a quiet voice said. We all turned to see Tanya standing in the doorway. I'm sorry, Sarah. Veronica blackmailed me into humiliating you at the photo shoot. Veronica's eyes blazed with fury. You little snitch. I'll ruin you for this. The room fell silent. Veronica realized her mistake too late. Dad stood up slowly, his voice cold. I've heard enough. Veronica, get out of my house. Now, I'll be contacting my lawyer in the morning. Veronica looked around wildly, then lunged for her purse. You'll regret this, all of you. As the door slammed behind her, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. It was over. Dad turned to me, his eyes misty. Sarah, I'm so sorry, I had no idea. I smiled softly, placing a hand on his arm. It's okay, Dad. We're going to be okay. Suddenly, I heard a familiar voice calling my name. Oh, Sarah. Over here. Emma was waving frantically from across the quad. I jobbed over, grinning. What's got you so excited? She thrust her phone at me. Check it out. Veronica got arrested for fraud. Karma's a well, you know. I couldn't help but laugh shaking my head. Can't say I'm surprised. Oh, did I show you my new graduation photos? I pulled out my wallet, showing her the retakes, me smiling confidently, looking like myself. Much better than clown college. Emma teased. Just then, Mike appeared, slipping an arm around my waist and giving me a quick kiss. Ready for the Dean's List celebration dinner? I nodded, glancing around at my friends and thinking about Dad, who was waiting for us at the restaurant, you know what? I really am. As we strolled across campus, a sense of pride washed over me. Despite everything Veronica had thrown my way, I come out stronger. My classes were going great, I had incredible friends, and my bond with Dad was stronger than ever. Hey, Mike said softly, you okay? You looked lost in thought for a second. I smiled, squeezing his hand, just thinking about how far we've come and how excited I am for what's next. Emma threw her arms around us both, laughing. Whatever it is, we'll face it together. Now come on, I'm starving. We all laughed, heading off into the evening, ready for whatever adventures lay ahead. Veronica had tried to break me, but instead she'd only made me stronger. Asterisk, asterisk, the story has come to an end, but now I want to hear from you, asterisk, asterisk, if you were in my shoes, would you have exposed Veronica publicly or tried to handle the situation privately with your father? What do you think are the ethical implications of airing family issues in front of others? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your experiences and opinions matter and might help someone facing a similar situation. And if you enjoyed this story and want to hear more like it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.